it's 32 minutes into recording and I don't even have a prototype of an app that I want. <laughs> that was supposed to be a video that shows how to use different AI tools to create an app. It turns out to be just a video with AI glitches. The more I work with AI, less I'm worried about my job. For the last nine years, I've been working in software industry and now with all the AI hype, I want to see if I can build an app with AI. For the second experiment, I'm not going to build a backend app, which is my area of expertise. I'm going to go for the React app. We're going to start with AI tool that gives you very pretty apps, and then we're going to switch to another AI tool that is more controllable, in my opinion, and we'll see how it's going to go. The app that I want to create is a rotating list of tasks. So basically, if I have a list of dinner ideas, I want to cross out the first idea on the list and I want it to go to the bottom of the list, indicating how much time uh, passed since this item was completed. So next time I want to have a dinner idea, I open my app and I see the idea that I haven't had the longest. It sounds like an extremely simple idea. It basically had to do list with some sorting and we've seen AI building the whole games and Facebook and Airbnb and whatever. So we're going to see if AI yeah, can handle a to-do list. That is the first prompt that I'm going to use. I'm going to build an app that allows you to create lists of items or tasks. As soon as the item is completed, it is moved to the bottom of the list and the amount of time that has passed since is displayed five minutes or five days. Let's see if it's going to work. Newsflash, it did not. This is the result of the first prompt. If you add a task, it seems to be working as expected, but as soon as you complete the task, it's just mark as completed. So when I'm done completing all of my tasks, I do not have my next idea on the list. This is not what I wanted. I tried tackling it with modifying the prompt to say, I don't want a separation into active and completed. Completed tasks should be moved to the bottom of the list and ready to be completed again. Let's see what AI built with that. So we have the same list. We're going to try adding the tasks. And when we complete them, they are marked as completed, but they're not moved to the bottom of the list like I wanted. Well, I tried modifying the prompt again. It still didn't work as I needed it to work. Moreover, when clicking on the task again, it just removed the time of completion. I decided that my prompt was not good enough and I can do better. So my prompt has become three times as big. And I added all of the parameters explicitly as I wanted, as you probably should do with an app. And the pro tip here, if you don't want to think about the structure of an app, you can start with any prompt to AI and then just look at the response and structure it the same way. As you can see, the app is starting to look better. We have an option to create a list. So let's create a list here. I have to say it looks very nice. It looks way better than anything that I could have built. Okay, we're gonna add a few items and you can even see a nice color gradient on the items. So what happens if I complete my item? And of course it goes back into the completed section. Maybe I was wrong with my prompt again. Do not show them as completed. The requirements were in the prompt AI yeah, just decided to ignore it, which is not a problem for this simple to do app, but I can imagine uploading the whole specification and getting this. When I attempted to change the app, it completely broke everything. You know what? Maybe something that is understandable for a human is less understandable for AI. And we're going to try to create a proper prompt this time using more technical characteristics. We're going to use the same prompt as before, but we're going to change it. Okay, we are not using the word tasks, we're not using the word completed, we're not using anything that seems to trip AI into building a normal to-do app. So let's see how that one goes. I like the names that Lovable gives to AI apps. This time it's a time twirl list. Don't even have to think about the name for the app. I should have saved that prompt because it looks like something went wrong. Well, good thing I have recording. Let me grab it from there. This video is cursed, it's not going well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my own recording of that particular video and get my prompt from there because I did not save it anywhere. Okay, OCR worked, but with some typos. So let's attempt again. It's 32 minutes into recording and I don't even have a prototype of an app that I want. I still feel like AI is some kind of a junior developer that you give a task to and then you 
wait for it and then you see the result and you realize this is completely not what you wanted. I have to say this version of the app is less beautiful than the previous one, but let's see how it's gonna go. I'm gonna create a dinner list and we're gonna... Oh. Wow. That is so much worse than before. <laughs> but okay, let's take the same prompt and just try it again. <laughs> that was supposed to be a video that shows how to use different AI tools to create an app, or at least a prototype of an app. And it turns out to be just a video with AI glitches all over the place. And at least we're gonna get a third or fourth version of a design, right? I had a plan to create an app in Lovable, then share it on GitHub, then add Superbase as a database, and then add a few tweaks with Corsair, but I don't think we're gonna get to that plan because this is not going smoothly. The more I work with AI, less I'm worried about my job. It only reminds me about my first experience building some kind of app with AI. When I asked to make a minor change, which is to remove a mock, the AI completely removed half of the functionality of the app. It was extremely confusing. It also changed the architecture of the app, so restoring changes was very difficult. Just, you know, it's the first prompt. It's the first response and it was already generated with errors. Every fix of the error can result in another error and every iteration of that will cost you credit. So it's cheaper to just know how to fix it, I guess. But today we're going full AI. So let's see if it's gonna manage. Can we see the app now? Yes, we can, okay. Design is there. Let's create our dinner list. We have a gradient back. Thank you very much. And a background. Okay. Let's add some burgers and pizza. Oh, I made a typo. Let's change it. We cannot change it. Did I ask to change it? Button to change the text. Oh, I don't see a button to change the text. But okay. Uh, let's check how the functionality works. Let's add a little bit more option. I don't know. Let it be soup. Okay, let's eat some burgers. Burgers moved to the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna have salad. Nice. Okay, I guess that works. I still don't see any color gradient on the item. Items on the, oh, okay. I see that was an OCR problem. Generally, I don't think it's a good idea to put two requirements in the same prompt, but as I mentioned, the idea of this particular app, the Lovable, is that you're charged a credit per prompt. So you do want to kind of package all of your requirements in one prompt as much as possible. But uh, we'll see how it's gonna manage. So far, I think this is the best generation I've had and this is attempt number five or something. And at least this one didn't glitch, right? Okay, exactly not what I want. Now the top items will be more saturated with the list color scheme, while bottom items will be less saturated and more white. Sounds great. Except it didn't work. Let me fix this by using a solid background color that gets more saturated for items at the top. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted. Okay, I, I see... I see the idea. Does it look very nice? I'm not sure, but let's move on. First of all, I want to share this app to GitHub so I can access it from other places. Now I have the same app open in the cursor, which is another AI-powered tool, and it's basically an ID based on VS Code. Now we can see the app, and I don't think I like the blue background, so I'm just going to ask Cursor to change the background. Unlike Lovable, it's less focused on the vibe coding and more focused on real coding, and it's going to present you with a list of changes that looked almost like pull request. So you can see exactly what was done and you can accept or deny changes. Here I asked to change the background of list of items. And as you can see, instead, the background of items was changed. You can just reject all of them and try again. All right, that looks much better. Let me create another list. Let's check if the functionality works. So let's say we checked in with John. Nice, John is on the bottom of the list now. Okay, that looks nice, but 
Dactylist is still white and we can barely see it. So with cursor, I'm usually making way smaller requests and it can go pretty nicely. All right, I guess I have my app. It only took me 55 minutes. So all I have to do is to add a database to the app so then I can publish it somewhere and use it. But that's going to be another exciting journey because from my previous experience with AI, it loves local storages and mocking some of the data just so it looks nice. Adding a database usually results in quite a few problems with the data consistency because you have no idea which data was mocked and which data is going to still be mocked after you add a database if you don't read your code. So is vibe coding a thing? I don't think so, not yet at least. It's taking quite some time to make AI build what I wanted. On the other hand, I did get an app that I wanted with the exact functionality that I wanted pretty quickly and without writing any code. So is it worth it? I guess it's an amazing tool for prototyping and we should absolutely use it. Do I want to maintain this app? Let me know if you want to see the second part of this video and we're going to see if we can add the database to this app and publish it. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see the videos about AI building backend because there I can criticize the generated code. One tip that I got from one of my colleagues is to use Cursor to make nice commits and this is exactly what it's doing. Another tip using Cursor is to create a list of rules. And this is awesome because you can commit this file. You can have the same rules for generation for all the people working on the project. You can add your rules and they're going to be taken into account every time you make a prompt. But I think one of the most important rules to add are to always ask clarifying questions and to present you with a plan before actually making changes in the code, especially if you're asking for something big. 